Welcome to another episode of The Q. My name is Lisa Maroney. I am the Director of Business Development for the Town of Chelmsford. And I'm here again with all of my co-hosts that uh, join me every week. And this episode, we're going to be talking about local food, fresh food grown by our area farmers. And we have some great, exciting news to share with some uh, initiatives and small projects that are, that are getting started this spring. So I guess I'd like to turn this over to my colleague and co-worker, Jen Melanson, to hear all of the uh, great news that what she's been up to. Yeah, thanks, Lisa. I'm Jen Melanson. I'm the Community Services Coordinator for the town. Um, <clears throat> as Lisa mentioned, um, we've got some, some new initiatives going to sort of help um, address um, food insecurity needs within the community, um, both you know, kind of acutely felt right now during the COVID pandemic, but also looking um, to make these sustainable projects um, to as we move forward into the future. So, um, one one exciting new project that um, that I have going on that has just happened in the last couple of weeks is I've worked with Fresh Start Food Gardens to install some raised bed vegetable gardens on Town Hall property. So behind Town Hall is a big parking lot, and there's a median area that's filled with stone that's kind of just a you know until now has been sort of like a a desert wasteland um not really anything there and so it gets a lot of sun back there and so i thought it would be a perfect spot to put some raised bed vegetable gardens in so that we can grow some produce to go to needy families in the community so um thanks to and, and while i'm talking i'm going to share my screen so you can see a couple photos Thanks to um, <clears throat> a generous um, a donation by Enterprise Bank and um, also um, a sponsorship um, from Edwards Vacuum, um, we're able to install these gardens. Here you can see installation in process. And um, on the right in that photo actually is our very own Megan Curran, who was there that day helping with the installation process. Um, and you can see the town hall is right up in the back there. Um, and so we have six raised beds that have gone in and um, one more good photo to share. And um, it's estimated that these gardens will produce, um, if we have a good growing season, hopefully about 250 pounds of produce to go to needy families in the community. So um, if anybody is interested in volunteering with this project, anybody that that's watching this, um, please contact my office because I'm definitely going to be looking for volunteers to help maintain the gardens, um, to also um, weed and to harvest when um, produce becomes ready to be harvested. So um, I would love for folks to get in touch with me who want to maybe help out with that, um, particularly now since we're still all sort of sheltering in place. If you're looking for an excuse to get out, um, you know, this is, a, this is a good way to do it. So um, <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to mention is um, a couple weeks ago when we had the school folks on, um, they mentioned that there are grab and go meals at the high school that are available for everybody in the community. So Monday through Friday, five days a week from 4 p.m. to 5.30, you can just show up at the high school. It's the entrance off of Graniteville Road. Um, drive up, no questions asked, pick up, pick up a meal for your family. So um, I've actually done this a couple of times to help out some homeless folks in our community. Um, and it, it's just a really great um, service that the schools and, and Dr. Lang are providing, not just to the school community, but to the entire community. So um, I guess I'll, I'll turn it over to Karen now because she's got some updates um, for us from the Senior Center, right, Karen? Um, I'm Karen Woodrow with Visiting Angels. We do senior home care. Um, and I am in my office today because I was uh, visiting the Chelmsford Senior Center, which is closed for day-to-day -day business right now, unfortunately, but they are very active. There are a lot of programs to support our seniors. And in, in conjunction with what we're talking about today, helping everybody through this quarantine, I want to put word out there that the Chelmsford Senior Center is doing their Meals on Wheels program. So if you are a senior and you are isolated at home and you don't even have to be um, 
you know, bedridden or, or not mobile, if you're just um, someone in that age group that is nervous about going out to the grocery store and doesn't want to be around crowds or take a chance and be exposed, um, Meals on Wheels is ready to serve you today as well. So you can call the Chelmsford Senior Center to get information about joining their program. They said that um, numbers are up from their usual Meals on Wheels business during this time. And I think it's great that seniors have a place to, um, to head off to. Um, and if I can share something um, on a personal level re related to the raised beds that you, you were doing, um, it's great that the town of Chelmsford has these beds. I know myself how beneficial fresh homegrown vegetables can be. And you know, in this time where we're all trying not to go to the grocery store as much and not expose those grocery workers and our fellow citizens of our town, it's nice to be able to go into your backyard and just pull something up. I have four raised beds in my yard at home and many summers they have just gone barren. I just haven't had time to do it. But with the quarantine, we were actually able to get out there as a family and dig up the weeds and put in new dirt. And we're looking forward to planting things that we are picking up from our town um, garden and planting these seedlings. And I, if I can share a screen with you, if I can figure out how to do this. Uh, am I sharing my screen? You did, it. you did it. Okay, so this is my older son and he went out to the yard today and he took a picture of himself between our raspberry. So on the left are our blueberry bushes. We have high bushes and low bushes. And the one, the low bushes, they taste like Maine. You eat a blueberry off that and it transports you right out of town and into Maine. And on uh, the right hand side of your screen are our raspberry bushes. And it is amazing to watch your garden bloom with fruit that you can eat all summer. Just you're having breakfast and you can just go outside and throw some raspberries on your cereal. But we try and save them and we save up and every summer we have the most amazing jumble berry pies and it's really a, a, like a nice feeling of satisfaction to garden your own food. So if anybody has a plot out there or even a pot, just something to put fresh dirt in with good nutrients to get in there, um, even if you just grew like a tomato or a pepper or, or garlic, anything, I think that it will make... Um, just make you feel really satisfied that you've accomplished something. It's, it's a project to give your kids something to have a sense of purpose for. You get to see the results of your labor and you get the benefits of good, healthy food. Well, thank you, Karen, for um, sharing that picture. And I really just wanna also give some kudos over to Jen because Anytime you do a first time new initiative project, it's not easy to do and um, you, you're getting it done and those beds look great at Town Hall. Um, I really appreciate um, the, the sharing of photos and, and understand I don't have raised beds. They've been on my wish list for a long time. Can't seem to move it up the list right now. I don't know what my problem is, but um, I think since Karen had mentioned um, it's a great thing to do with a bunch of little kids. Why not segue over to Megan and hear how she gets it all done with uh, her her brood of children? And um, any any feedback on that on that, Megan? Yes. Yeah. So hi everybody. <laughs> I'm Megan Curran. I'm a nutritionist and um, owner of Farm Fresh Nutrition and Wellness. And Jen, I love this project. This is sort of this is right up my alley. Uh, I love the fact that we have things in place to help feed um, our families in need, but a lot of the food that they're getting has to have a long shelf life. It has to be, you know, non-perishable. Um, I think the fruits and the vegetables are what they need the most. We have this sort of cycle of chronic disease where these people, you know, are, are having to get convenience foods, thing, foods from, you know, if they're in a food desert, places where they don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables. But it really is, a very rewarding as as you said Karen and it's it's a very fulfilling and eye-opening experience to grow your own food when when you associate or put together the idea of where our food comes from um, it it really changes everything I've seen it in children I've seen it in my own you know children I, my 
daughter who's in kindergarten, I think the first time I took her to the Maker Farm in Westford, they were doing a gardening project and she was probably two. And this child, I needed to make a happy face out of carrots and peas and I had to, you know, fly it in. Like she wouldn't eat anything unless it was decked out and, you know, cleverly disguised as something cute and fun. But she went right over to the dirt and ripped out a carrot and just, and I couldn't believe it. And it really was like an aha moment for me. Uh, and I have done a lot of work um, in Waltham, the Waltham Fields Community Farm, bringing kids from the inner city out and they'll go to the field and they'll, you know, pick something off of a vine and they'll say, what do I do with this? You can eat it. And they just can't believe. But they see the association between where our food comes from, um, you know, and also, you know, I take it one step further and kind of explain what that's going to do in your body. The big thing right now is the way our food is grown, it's less nutritious than it once was. And that is really discouraging. I think you know, apples, it takes an average of nine months to get an apple from where it's grown and harvested to your house. And that is shocking because once you pick a vegetable or a fruit from its nutrient source from the vine, the clock is ticking. So the nutrients are just going down. So now a lot of our vegetables and our fruits are grown on monoculture crops. So a farm to produce, you know, more yields, they're genetically modifying it so that it produces higher yields and it produces, um, you know, crops that are supposed to be pest resistant, drought resistant. But the problem in doing that um, is that we're killing our biodiversity in our soil. So we're actually going to run out at some point in farmable soil, which is really scary. So I think that initiatives like GENS, where you're sort of starting the conversation about why it's important to buy local produce, why it's important to know how your food is grown. There you know, are environmental, huge environmental impacts um, on these factory farms. There are animal welfare um, issues. But you know, on a personal note for us, there's nutritional deficiencies that are coming from our fruits and vegetables. They're not, they don't have the, you know, the mineral content that they used to have because of that loss of biodiversity. So a healthy plant comes from healthy soil. So if you don't have healthy soil, you don't have a healthy plant. Um, and another, for the environmental impact that might be interesting, there's a few documentaries. One is called The Biggest Little Farm. It's very entertaining. It's about a woman who is a nutritionist and her husband that was like a marketing executive and they just started a farm, a regenerative, sustainable farm. And it was amazing because in California, when everyone else was having droughts and fires, their farm was the one that was preserved because of the regenerative methods they had for growing their food. So I think that, you know, bringing this to Chelmsford, as many raised beds as we can have, invisible so people can see it. They ask questions. When we were installing the bed, so many people were walking by and asking, what's going in here? And they were, you could see how excited they were. And the fact that it's going to go to people that, um, you know, deserve this. They it, there's food, healthy food should be accessible to everybody, no matter what your social, economical issues are. We all deserve that. Um, some of it's lack of education, some of it's, you know, lack of availability, but we all need to have access to that. And I think doing that will stop this kind of chronic disease cycle that, that we're in. So I commend you, Jen. <laughs> Thanks. You know, it's funny when you, when you mentioned about how excited people were when they were walking by and and seeing the gardens being installed first, I was so excited to see you there helping with the installation. I didn't know that you were going to be there. And so that was a really unexpected surprise for me. But I just want to share, um, you know, a cool story from sort of as I was leaving towards the end of the day for me, but it was kind of still the middle of the day for you guys. And I was standing outside watching you guys working. And this couple came walking by um, that they were just out and about taking a walk and they happened to be walking through the parking lot behind town hall and they stopped and asked me what was going on and so I explained to them the project and they were so excited about it that um that the the gentleman that was there said to me um you know can, can we make a donation where can we send a donation to this and so I was digging out a business card to give to them and the guy just opened up his wallet and he said here can I just give you twenty dollars now and I mean so people like they, they want to help out with this sort of thing, and they're very excited about this happening. Um, and I should mention that that this is, 
you know, kind of just a small bit of, of a larger initiative that's happening um, with some of the plots that are over in the community garden in South Africa. Um, South Chelmsford off of Acton Road where there are a couple of plots where some produce is going to be grown um, to help th that that produce will go to the um, the food pantry that's behind town hall to also go to families so um, they are also looking for volunteers to help out over there so if anybody's interested with that they can contact my office I can connect you with the people who are running that so I mean definitely lots of great things that are going going on in town I love that. That's amazing. I started a garden um, at South Rowe Elementary School. That's where my children go. And I just approached the principal. They have a beautiful courtyard. And I said, what would you think about, you know, starting a raised bed? And um, Molly McMahon, the principal, she's amazing. And she jumped on it and said, yes, let's do this. And so I think the more people I talk to about this, I'm seeing sort of a shift in the importance, you know, knowing the importance of where our food is coming from and why our kids should sort of make this part of their, you know, enrichment growing up. These kids are going to be our future policymakers, our future voters, and if they have a connection to their food now and the environment, that's only going to carry with them as they get older. And I think, you know, letting people know who, you know, are coming from a, a, a lower income community, they're not forgotten, they're just as important. We need to get them this food as well they deserve to eat healthy and feel good and you know when you you eat that nutrient dense foods everything gets better you know your mood is better your attention in school is better your athletic and academic performances are better um acne is better you know kids just feel better people feel better you know rates of depression can go down but when you don't have access to that i know how i feel if i don't you know if i have a week when i'm just not eating great or I'm rushing around and grabbing stuff on the go, I feel a lot different than when I'm able to prepare a healthy meal. And, you know, for, for you, Karen, going out to your garden and picking, you know, some basil for your pesto or, you know, throw some raspberries in your smoothie, there's nothing better than that. And it seems intimidating. I hear you, Lisa, saying, I don't know where to start. I wanted to do it for so long. And it does seem intimidating, but it's, you just got to jump in and I can give you some tips on how to get started, but you really just need a box or, you know, a, a planter or something. And plants thankfully are very forgiving. <laughs> if I can grow them, then anyone can. <laughs> and my kids will really love, they love to get out, they love to get dirty, but I, I've seen that carry over for all ages. Lisa, I might know where you can get a bucket. Oh, yes. Great. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Uh, commentary to the work we did together, getting a whole bunch of buckets um, for a winter project that we did um, to help the seniors. That's pretty funny. And I think, you know, the overwhelming part for me is that it's just going to be something else I have to do. And it has to be uh, uh, taken care of daily, pretty much, you know, depending on the weather, the water, the animals, the harvesting, the weeding, all of that. And I love vegetables. My thing is I'm a flower gardener. So I've never had a vegetable garden or a vegetable bed. And I think they look wonderful in the yard and all of that. But I see it as something else that, you know, um, but you're motivating me by all of the conversations, the pictures of Karen's raised beds with the netting and it's controlled because some of those raspberry plants can go wild and take over everywhere. But if you do it right from the start and a raised bed, which is different than, you know, what was done 10 years ago, um, it seems to be a little bit more of a, um, of a art, I think, you know, so I'm, I'm much more motivated, but I'm cautious to get, get started because um, it's, it's a commitment. It needs a little bit of work to do it right. And the rewards are the harvest. And the rewards are going outside to get a handful of fresh berries for your oatmeal or your cereal or your salad, any of that stuff. So, um, you know, I've actually heard many things mentioned that I didn't re really even know about so far. Well, I want to put a little different spin on it too, on the on the the chore <laughs> aspect of it, Lisa, because I get that too. You know, uh, 
it's, it's, this is why I'm clamoring for volunteers to come help <laughs> me with the garden at town hall, because um, it is, it definitely is work. Right. But, um, but I think that also it can be an aspect of self care. You know, it can be time for you to be out there connecting to nature away from, from the news and the media and all of the, terrible things that are going on in the world right now and just be, you know, immersed in a very primitive, simple process that connects you to the earth and to the ground and literally can ground you um, and help you feel more centered and balanced and you get something, you know, delicious to eat out of it too. So maybe that will help flip your thinking a little bit Absolutely. as far as being a chore, you know? Great points. Thank you. Thank you very much because um, I, I do see the reward of it and I do see the therapeutic aspect of it. Certainly um, whether Matt, whether I'm staring at a computer screen or, or a phone screen or, you know, you, you, know, you do need to have some, some time where you could just, you know, rest your mind a little bit and just kind of do the, you know the gardening and outside fresh air all of that stuff so and um, this, you'll be surprised it, I am not a farmer by any means and the funny story my husband likes to tell is we used to live in Sarajevo and our landlord lived in a house on a property with us and he had this garden going and I went to the market one day and I came back with a bag full of, of uh, veg fruits and vegetables and he took one look at me and started yelling. He's like, Karen, what are you doing? Why are you buying carrots at the market? Come here. And he pulls me over to his garden and he sticks his hand in and he pulls out a carrot. And I was like, oh my God, is that where carrots come from? <laughs> and he was horrified. I'm like, I'm a city girl. I don't know about these things. And so here we are, fast forward. I have my own garden. We're doing it. I'm very lazy. I don't take care of it. But nature is an amazing thing and it tends to take care of itself. So if you just sort of plant the seed, and I, you know, pun intended here, plant the seed, those nutrients, if you put in um, nutritious dirt and, and healthy plants, nature will take care of itself. And you'll be surprised to find what you um, have at the end of the season. Well, thank you, Karen, because I think I'm going to get started with this idea, maybe start with a little patio planter project uh, type of thing. And then I have these great friends here <laughs> that I can talk to and uh, learn from and, and um, get some more guidance as, as the little sprouts come along and, and get started. And who knows, maybe in a, in a few more weeks, we could all be um, eating a fresh tomato or, you know, sharing our, our, the harvest um, fruits of our labor per se. So I think that's good. We're going to wrap it up unless anyone has any last burning questions that we need to provide some answers to this week. I do have one last thing. I want to um, just really quickly go back to something that Karen said when she was talking about um, the Meals on Wheels program for seniors and, and, um, and Megan touched on this too with regards to access to food. Um, and, and the Meals on Wheels program is terrific for seniors to, um, you know, be able to get meals if they can't get out. Um, but I wanted to let folks know that I have volunteers that are working for me very generously to um, go out and get um, groceries and needed products for people in the community, um, even if you're not a senior and you're not able to get out of your house or maybe you shouldn't because um, you have a health condition um, you know, that, that prevents you from being able to be out in public. So um, I don't want lack of access to be a reason why people are not um, getting the food that they need. So please contact my office um, if you are in need, or maybe you have a neighbor that you know of who's in need, um, and I can make arrangements with my volunteers to be able to get folks what, what they need. It's been really, people have stepped up, um, and it's been wonderful to see the community helping each other out like this. Um, and, and so, you know, nobody needs to, to go without during this time. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Jen, for all the work that you do for the community. And um, certainly put me on your volunteer list. I don't know if that if I've stated that obviously, but certainly add me to your to your group of volunteers. And with that, we're going to wrap up the show. Thank you so much, everybody. And we'll uh, be back again next week with another episode of The Queue.